President of the United States. A tough day. This evening in Kabul, as you all know, terrorists attacked that we've been talking about and worried about, that the intelligence community has assessed, uh, has undertaken <clears throat> an attack by a group known as ISIS-K. <clears throat> took the lives of American service members, standing guard at the airport, and wounded several others seriously. He had also wounded a number of civilians, and civilians were killed as well. I've been engaged all day in constant contact with the military commanders here in Washington and the Pentagon, as well as in Afghanistan and uh, Doha. And uh, my commanders here in Washington in the field have been on this with great detail, and you've had a chance to speak to some so far. The situation on the ground is still evolving, and I'm constantly being updated. <clears throat> These American service members who gave their lives — it's an overused word, but it's totally appropriate here — were heroes. Heroes who have been engaged in a dangerous, selfless mission to save the lives of others. They're a part of an airlift, an evacuation effort unlike any scene in history with more than 100,000 American citizens, American partners, Afghans who helped us, and others taken to safety in the last 11 days. Just in the last 12 hours or so, another 7,000 have gotten out. They were part of the bravest, most capable, the most selfless military on the face of the earth. And they're part of simply what I call the backbone of America. They're the spine of America, the best the country has to offer. Jill and I, our hearts ache, like I'm sure all of you do as well, for all those Afghan families who lost loved ones, including small children, or been wounded in this vicious attack. And we're outraged as well as heartbroken. <clears throat> Being the father of an Army major who served for a year in Iraq and before that was in Kosovo as a U.S. attorney for the better part of six months in the middle of a war. When he came home after a year in, a, in Iraq, he was diagnosed, like many, many coming home, with an aggressive and lethal cancer of the brain, who we lost. We have some sense, like many of you do, what the families of these brave heroes are feeling today. You get this feeling like you're being sucked into a black hole in the middle of your chest. There's no way out. My heart aches for you. But I know this. We have a continuing obligation, <clears throat> a sacred obligation to all of you, the families of those heroes. That obligation is not temporary. It lasts forever. The lives we lost today were lives given in the service of liberty, the service of security, and the service of others, in the service of America. Like their fellow brothers and sisters in arms who died defending our vision and our values in the struggle against terrorism, of the fall on this day, they're part of a great and noble company of American heroes. To those who carried out this attack, as well as anyone who wishes America harm, know this, we will not forgive. We will not forget. We will hunt you down and make you pay. I will defend our interests and our people with every measure at my command. 
Over the past few weeks, <clears throat> I know you're many of you are probably tired of hearing me say it. We've been made aware by our intelligence community that the ISIS K, an arch enemy, the Taliban, people who were freed when both those prisons were opened, has been planning a complex set of attacks on the United States personnel and others. This is why, from the outset, I've repeatedly said this mission was extraordinarily dangerous and on why I've been so determined to limit the duration of this mission. As General McKenzie said, this is why our mission was designed, this is the way it was designed to operate, operate under severe stress and attack. We've known that from the beginning. And as I've been in constant contact with our senior military leaders, and I mean constant, round the clock, and our commanders on the ground and throughout the day, they made it clear that we can and we must complete this mission, and we will. And that's what I've ordered them to do. We will not be deterred by terrorists. We will not let them stop our mission. We will continue the evacuation. I've also ordered my commanders to develop operational plans to strike ISIS-K assets, leadership, and facilities. We will respond with force and precision at our time, at the place we choose, in the moment of our choosing. Here's what you need to know. These ISIS terrorists will not win. We will rescue the Americans in there. We will get our Afghan allies out. And our mission will go on. America will not be intimidated. And I have the utmost confidence in our brave service members who continue to execute this mission with courage and honor to save lives and get Americans, our partners, our Afghan allies out of Afghanistan. Every day when I talk to our commanders, I ask them what they need. What more do they need, if anything, to get the job done? As they will tell you, I granted every request. I re reiterated them today on three occasions that they should take the maximum steps necessary to protect our forces on the ground in Kabul. And I also want to thank the Secretary of Defense and the military leadership of the Pentagon and all the commanders in the field. There has been complete unanimity from every commander on the objectives of this mission and the best way to achieve those objectives. Those who have served through the ages have drawn inspiration from the book of Isaiah, when the Lord says, whom shall I send? Who shall go for us? The American military has been answering for a long time. Here I am, Lord, send me. Here I am, send me. Each one of these women and men of our armed forces are the heirs of that tradition of sacrifice, of volunteering to go in harm's way, to risk everything, not for glory, not for profit, but to defend what we love and the people we love. And I ask that you join me now in a moment of silence for all those in uniform and out, uniform, military and civilian, who have given the last full measure of devotion. Thank you. May God bless you all, and may God protect his troops and all those standing watch for America. We have so much to do. It's within our capacity to do it. We just have to remain steadfast. Steadfast. We will complete our mission, and we will continue after our troops have withdrawn, to find means by which we can find any American who wishes to get out of Afghanistan. We will find them, and we will get them out.